Before it has even turned a wheel, before the key has even been pressed to unshackle the locks, the new Aston Martin Vantage Roadster is a seductive success. As Renny Zellweger might say, you had me at hello. It is gorgeous. Yes, looks are subjective, but given the number of people that voiced their admiration for it at Caffeine and Machine, a good litmus test if ever there was one. I think popular opinion will bear me out on this. Elegant yet muscular. It would be a hard soul indeed that didn't get a few goosebumps seeing the Vantage Roadster parked on a driveway in the morning, or parked amongst squirrels in the artfully dappled light of a woodland, obviously. And while you're admiring the lines, it's worth pointing out that this car has the new optional Vane grille. Not everyone was a fan of the Hunter grille that adorned the Vantage when it was launched, so this more classically Aston variant will be available from now on. So, the Roadster makes an excellent first impression. Then there's a the noise it makes when you start it up. In fact, it sounds so good that you just want to do it again. And again. That engine is the same 4-litre twin-turbo V8 that you'll find in the coupe version of the Vantage. Power remains at 503 brake horsepower, and torque is identical at 505 pounds-foot, or 685 newton-metres if you prefer metric. A transaxle layout means the Mercedes AMG derived engine is mated via a carbon fibre prop shaft to the familiar 8 speed ZF Auto at the rear of the car. And between the rear wheels, there is also an electronically controlled limited slip diff. Weight has increased by 60 kilos, 39 kilos for the roof itself, and the remaining 21 kilos for the secondary adjustments needed to accommodate it. As a result, the weight distribution has shifted by 1% towards the rear, so the dampers have been revalved, the transmission mounts have been altered, and the rear roll stiffness has been increased. But how do all the numbers feel on the road? Well, the driving position is certainly the same as the coupe. And that's a very good thing indeed, because you feel really nicely ensconced. You sit beautifully low in the car. This engine, well, I've said so much about it in the past, it is just fabulous. The steering, like in the coupe, is quick, it's quite light, but it's still sufficiently accurate that it's nice to use. And the balance of the car is such that you can drive it on the nose or you can brake early and then really drive it through the corner with the throttle. It's just got superb balance. As with the coupe, you've got three modes for both dampers and drivetrain. And for the drivetrain, you really can change the character of it. So it stays woofly but relatively sort of demure in its normal sport setting. However, go up to Sport Plus and you get the full blood and thunder effect. <laughs> In terms of performance, the 0-62 mile an hour sprint is achieved just two tenths slower than the coupe at 3.8 seconds. The top speed is also only marginally slower at 190 miles an hour with the roof up and 185 miles an hour with the wind in your hair. There is however one aspect in which Aston claims this car is faster than any other, the speed of its Z-fold roof mechanism. It will raise in just 6.8 seconds, leaving you with a nicely refined GT car vibe and it will lower in a mere 6.7 seconds. It will also do this at up to 31 miles an hour, and it's sufficiently compact to leave you with 200 litres of boot space. The ride has been perhaps the biggest, the nicest surprise, because it's brilliant. On really bumpy British B roads, it has excellent compliance, a nice feeling of travel, but it retains a tautness so that the whole car still feels really accurate and you can change the damper settings and feel like you can use them all on the road. I've actually used the, the firmest track setting a bit and yes, you wouldn't use it all the time but it's nice to have that option that you're not just limited to the plushest setting in order to be able to make the car work on the road. The interior of the Aston is great in terms of the feel of the materials, with the big, cool metal paddles and the soft leather trim, but I still think there's something slightly inelegant about the mass of buttons on the centre console. Price, incidentally, is about 10% up on the coupe, meaning the Roadster starts at a whisker under £127,000 in the UK, or $147,000 in the US. Now you probably noticed that this car 
is in American spec because, well, the launch of these was meant to be over in California. But in some ways, that seems quite appropriate because this has all the really, really good features of an American muscle car. It looks brilliant. It looks squat, muscular, and the sound, well, it's a proper V8 sound. It's a car that, for all that it's good to drive quickly, you don't need to be driving quickly to enjoy it. Yes, I hope they put a manual in this at some point. But I think this really might be the sweet spot of the Vantage range. In short, I think the Vantage Roadster is one of, if not the best car Aston produces. The whole package just feels right, all the facets complementing one another to produce a beautifully rounded proposition that has that all-important feel-good factor, right from the moment you first lay eyes on it.